welcome to Kinda Keto. I'm Donna. And on today's video, we're going to do a keto style beef stew because it's getting cold out there. So it's time for some comfort food. So join me. On my channel, I do cooking videos like today, which I have a few cooking tips in there for you. So, and a couple maybe budgeting tips as well. And I do uh, some restaurant reviews and I do some grocery hauls. So a little little mix of everything. And if you like that type of content, go ahead and give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and uh, leave a comment if you like more of that kind of thing. And definitely consider subscribing. All right, there's just something about cold weather and nice, warm, hearty stews. So just a few root vegetables we want to stay away from, and then how do we thicken it? So we have a, a few little tweaks we have to do. And I looked around for several different videos and Pinterest, and uh, the way I kind of want to do the beef stew, one, I want to do it in a crock pot, not in the oven. Um, I you know, looked at different ingredients, different times, uh, different techniques, and the one I'm starting off with is called That Low Carb Life, but I'm tweaking it a little bit. Uh, changing a few little things, uh, so I mean it's mostly hers if it's a her, uh, but I'm going to change up a few things. So this is going to be an experiment today, and we're going to see how it comes out. And I'm sure it's going to freeze well. I've always froze it before. We have a cabin trip coming up. I'm very excited. I have an Etsy shop, and of course been slam busy with holidays. So with holiday orders, so I am finally getting ready to relax. So we try to hardly leave the cabin at all, and we bring a bunch of food, keto friendly of course, um, and beef stew is going to be one of them. Here are the ingredients I'm going to use to make my own beef stew, keto version. So we obviously are going to start with some just beef stew meat. You can do a chuck roast and cut it up, but I just find it easier just to do the stew meat. We've got two packages here, and it's just shy under two pounds, so one and a half to two pounds I use for that. Use a little avocado oil, because we're going to uh, sear the meat a little bit for extra flavor. We got some salt. We got some beef broth. She says red wine vinegar in the recipe that um, I printed out, but I'm tweaking this recipe. So I think it's much better with some red wine, cooking red wine. Now, I don't drink wine, so I don't know anything about you know, special wines. But these, just these cooking wines, which is very inexpensive, is very good for with the beef. It really adds a lot of flavor. And as far as carbs, it is for two tablespoons less than one gram of carbs. So for the whole batch, I think that is definitely helpful. Tomato paste. Some use it, some don't. I think, again, that adds that little richness in there because I'm not going to do any diced tomatoes. So here's some tomato paste. And this is another thing. Two tablespoons is four grams of net carbs. So four grams of net carbs for two tablespoons and again, this makes six servings. So I think the flavor is definitely worth a little bit of carbs there. When I was kind of deciding on different recipes, I saw one that had soy sauce, and they wanted to use it instead of the Worcestershire um, for carb reasons, but I decided not to do that. So we're ditching the soy sauce using regular Worcestershire sauce. And Worcestershire sauce, one gram of carbs for one teaspoon we'll be using one tablespoon and again you know for an entire batch and i think the worcestershire just goes better with beef I got a bay leaf check all right so um this recipe did not call for time but i think time is definitely very good in beef stew so i'm putting some time in i don't have fresh parsley so i'm going to do some parsley flakes we've got some salt we've got some pepper Got to add salt and pepper. So I think this is going to be stock full. This is going to be a very hearty beef stew. So we're going to do some celery. Got some carrots. And yes, that's higher in sugar. But, you know, just carrots in a beef stew, you kind of got to do it. Um, so I'm going to do just probably two large um, carrots, peeled and diced up. 
my onion, my garlic. Some, again, do not have garlic in there in that recipe, but I'm Italian. I put garlic in everything. So onion and garlic. And instead of potatoes, we have options. My husband was kind enough to kind of uh, pre-dice some stuff for me. I'm using radishes. I made this fabulous turkey pot pie and I put the radishes in and great texture. Didn't even taste like anything. It just tasted like the sauce it was in. So I decided to do radishes. I have heard of turnips and jicama. I saw in some reviews. Uh, I've done jicama fries, but um, I just thought I'd just do this. This way you only had to cut them in half and didn't have to mess with the whole root. I also saw celery root as an option. Maybe another time I will try that just to expand our horizons. And Bobby has already uh, cut up some of my carrots for me. And the last ingredient that's going to hopefully thicken all this up is our wonderful xanthan gum. I am finding more and more uses for this. So if you ever get the xanthan gum, you are going to find uses for it, I promise you. Uh, and it's not very expensive. So here's the Walmart brand, 428 for 5 ounces. I used this for keto gravy I made for Thanksgiving. And I used it for, uh, I mean, this is just recently. I used it for other things as well. But um, I used it for the turkey pot pie. And that sauce, that creamy, beautiful turkey sauce <laughs> for turkey pot pie came out wonderfully with just a small amount of the xanthan gum. So that went so well, I wanted to put that in this one and see how that comes out. And this is really not a hard recipe, but there's just a couple little steps. I mean, besides chopping up and you know, washing and chopping up your vegetables and your onion and your garlic and all that, this extra step is really worth it. So about browning the meat. Now, a cooking tip for you. I've been doing beef stew for years. And what you want to do to brown it is you want to pat it dry with some paper towels. You want it as dry as can be because that's going to make that nice crispy seal on it. Seal. <laughs> so you just dry it off with some paper towels and a traditional uh, either beef stew or if you're going to brown meat, we used to brown it in some flour. Uh, we would I would toss it in flour and salt and pepper. So we're just going to skip that step and I think it'll be just fine. So we're going to just pat it nice and dry. But even if you ever watch the movie Julia and Julia, which is like one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. i got to watch it once a year. Um, she said, you know, about not crowding mushrooms, which, by the way, you could add mushrooms to this, but I don't know. I didn't think it was traditional. I saw some recipes with mushrooms, but I skipped that. So they said to for the beef to brown that you need to have it nice and dry. So that's what we're doing here. All right, I'm going to throw some salt and pepper on there and get ready to start searing it. Okay, got my Dutch oven or whatever pan you've got ready. I put about a tablespoon of avocado oil in there and we may need more. We're going to have to do some batches. And then we are at kind of a medium high heat. I'm going to start browning the meat and we're going to do like four minutes uh, for a batch. You don't want them to be on top of each other. It has to be a single layer. Now just to make it even, let's just say five minutes. So I did two and a half minutes and then try to turn them over and see how beautiful golden brown they're, they're getting. And then we're going to just set it aside and do the next batch. Okay, now this may freak you out. First time I did beef stew, I'm like, oh my God, I'm burning everything. Well, I didn't know about nasty bits and how it adds all this flavor. So this is perfectly fine. Getting ready for batch number two. Going to put a little more oil in and cook some more beef. All right, once you get all the beef out, this is what's called deglazing. I am going to do, recipe says two, but I'm going to do a, two tablespoons. I'm going to do about a quarter cup, maybe just a little less of the red wine. And see, that's what you want. This is bubble up and a half a cup of the beef broth. And then what you do, is that you scrape up all the flavor. So I got my two tablespoons of tomato paste. I'm going to kind of whisk in before I pour it over 
all of our wonderful ingredients. Once you do this the first time, it's just, I don't know, it's so exciting. <laughs> you really feel like a cook, and it's, it's nothing fancy, you know? It's a fancy term, deglaze. But all it is is pouring some liquid in a hot pan that has a bunch of sh shit stuck to it. <laughs> but it's good stuff. All right. That looks really nice and rich. All right, that's all. That's all I needed to do. See how rich that looks? And then our meat, that's about what we want. See the nice brown edges. And I used to get scared. I said, oh, that's going to make it so tough when I first started doing this. That's the idea of the slow cooker or even the long time in the oven with the Dutch oven. It's the low and slow method and it releases the toughness of any meat and it just makes it soft and beautiful and just melt it in your mouth. So I just need to prep these last uh, bits of vegetables here. I've got a whole onion I'm going to dice and it calls for two cloves of garlic. I'm Italian which means at least double so I've got five big cloves of garlic. I'm going to mince that up. But I did want to uh, let you know, like on these halves and like the end pieces, do not throw them away. So keep it in a bag. I'm going to make a video of that soon, if I haven't yet. Um, and keep your celery bits. So I got some celery pieces in there, like the tops, the ends, and all that. You know, do wash your celery. But I'm going to put some celery in there, and I'm going to put the little bits of the onion in there. And that way, I will be ready when I'm ready to make my own chicken stock. A couple other cooking tips. Uh, you're supposed to keep your onions and garlic just, you know, in your pantry, not re refrigerated. Uh, but if I'm going to cut it, to cut down on uh, the crying factor, put it in your uh, refrigerator for like an hour or freezer for like 15 minutes and no crying. And then I saw this little tip there, so I got to cut, cut in half, peeled, and then kind of cut about halfway in. And you keep your end here on, so get to that about to that end, and then cut along this way, and it holds together. Remember, it doesn't need to be dice, dice. Just kind of cut up, sort of bigger. Okay. I've never been good at chopping real quick, but uh, so I'm not going to make them too small. And then cut down, kind of holds together. And then there's that piece, another piece that you want to put in to save for your stock. Boom! Okay, we got a crock pot. I do tend to just put some little olive oil spray or avocado spray in the bottom of it. You can use those crock pot liners if you like. I, it's just not hard to clean for me, so it's okay. Anyway, so we're going to start off with uh, the beef on the bottom, and then we're just going to layer it with all the vegetables. So we got our onions and garlic. I'm not a lefty. I should have set it up a little differently. <laughs> okay, I got onions. Got my celery. Let's see. I don't know if I this is too many carrots, and I'm going to kind of do this by eye. So all the radishes. Now, obviously, this is where things can differ for you. Um, you only want to use a half an onion. Use a half an onion. Use whatever you want. And I, but I want to use all the radishes. And let's see. I don't know. I think I could do a few more carrots. I kind of wanted to just sort of see. He didn't remember how many he <laughs> had cut up, so let's just throw a couple more in there. <laughs> All right, remember again, this makes about six servings. Okay, a few spices. I'm going to do about a teaspoon of thyme, just sprinkled over one or two bay leaves. There's already salt and pepper on the, you know, when we brown the meat, so I don't think I'm going to add any more to that because we also have our. Uh, beef broth. So I'm going to put the rest of this in. I started with a half a cup when I deglazed. Okay, so here's two cups. This is what has been debating with all the recipes that I was looking at. One had two and a half cups, one had four and a half cups, and what a difference that is. So I so said this was the big experiment part of it. I hope 
that doesn't ruin everything. Um, but so that is going to be a total of uh, four cups of the beef broth. And then our lovely sauce we made on the Dutch pan with the Dutch oven. And it's not a lot, but it's, or it is a lot of flavor. All right, I'm going to shut this off and scrape it all out. I don't want to waste it. Okay. Worcestershire, one tablespoon. All right, we got it all in there. And the reason you want the beef on the bottom, because you want the vegetables and all that flavor to sink into the meat. So that's why we put the vegetables on top of the meat. And to serve with the stew, I just pulled out a batch of keto cheddar bay biscuits <laughs> made with almond flour. That's from Wholesome Yum. And I will leave a link to that recipe. But they just kind of started getting golden. I got to let them sit for a few minutes. And then I'm going to mix up a little, a little butter and garlic powder and parsley mix and brush it on the top. These are so good. All right, here we go. We finally got it done. But it definitely has the right consistency, what I like. I don't like it splashy. I saw some recipes that had it uh, kind of like over cauliflower rice or something. I don't want it over rice. I want just stew everything in one pot. So this way is nice and thick the way I like it. We tested the carrots and the radishes, and they're all... You know, I can just even do it with a spoon, and they're cut right in half there. And the radishes lose their um, red color when they cook, just like when I had made it my turkey pot pie. So there's that, and I got my, my little Cheddar Bay biscuit there. And we're going to give it a shot. Now, most importantly, taste. Is it worth all that cooking time? So like I said, we already knew we liked the consistency. Oh, I go right for the beef first. Oh yeah, that's worth it. Using the red wine, searing the meat, sealing in those juices, deglazing the pan, those little steps are definitely worth it. Oh yeah, so this is be my new go-to once or twice a year. I know I have some detailed steps in there, but I want to show you, if you're an average cook, you know, this is not a scary thing. It's, it's, you know, very easy chopping vegetables. The hardest thing is, you know, maybe browning the meat. How hard is that, really? And then throwing everything together and put it in the crock pot, and then you're good to go for 8 to 10 hours. So I just know that you can do it, and I tested it for you. And I'm going to leave uh, the recipe below. I can, like I said, I did tweak it a little bit, so I'm going to see if I can learn how to put a recipe in the description box. And you can even, uh, you know, wash and prep your vegetables the day before because you want to put this in in the morning. I started mine a little on the late side, so it was kind of late when it was done. But, uh, you know, you do your vegetables the night before. You'll have, all you have to do is brown the meat in the morning. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Any suggestions, any thoughts? Are you going to try it? Have you tried it? And until next time, bye. Keep warm.